Hi there, this is Evgeny, and I welcome you to our Land Graph introduction series. We spent quite a lot of time looking at the different concepts, like how to set a breakpoint in the graph, how to grab the user acceptance, and we even touched how tools are working. And I think it's time to take a look at the more deeper, at the more complex concepts. So, uh, in the next videos, we are going to check uh, different aspects of how the flow in graphs work. And this time, we are starting with the concept with the name parallelization. And quick note, there is a link to Amazon website in the description. So please click on it, and then when you buy something somewhere, Amazon will reward me and provide a couple of cents. So I will be closer to my dream. A new keyboard. All right, thanks a lot, and now let's jump into the coding session. All right, before we dive into the parallel worlds, uh, let's try and uh, check something very similar, like let's run everything sequentially, and uh, here we are going to touch a bit of theory, so no funny examples yet, just to make it easy to understand. And we do have four nodes, and they're pretty simple, they're printing uh, the message, pretty similar one, that uh, they are not A, B, C, D, and then they are updating the state of the graph with the name of the node. And the state is just value as a string, right? And uh, let me compile the graph. And it's pretty straightforward, right? It goes from A to B, from B to C, to C to D, and to the end, at the end. And to the end, at the end. Yeah, exactly this way. So let's give it a try and invoke the graph as the empty value and see how it works. And this is pretty expectable, right? Nothing really fancy here. Uh, the first graph, the first dot, starts with an empty state, and at the node B, we already have state updated to something from node A. And see the same, the state was updated with previous node, and the same as D, and the final result, expectedly, right, we have this D state only. And let's try and run the same graph as the same nodes, but in parallel this time. And uh, better than explaining everything here, let me just demonstrate how it looks like. So we have the prioritization after the A node, which goes uh, at the same time to B and C, and then it goes back to the D, and everything is here. And if I run this one, well, hmm, it fails, right? Something was definitely wrong here, and if we check uh, what's happening, we can see the message, okay, at key value, uh, it can receive only one pair per step, and use annotated key to handle multiple values, it says, and practically what's happening, we can check it, uh, we started with the node A, and it was an empty state, and then we started at the same time B and C, and then we were trying to update the state A, but then it's not clear, right, because uh, in which way we have to update the state, like uh, there is no definite rules here, and uh, how we should process with that, and which state should be at the end. So, well, that's where the problem lies, right? And to solve it, we need to define the certain order. So let's modify the state uh, the way it was suggested here, using this uh, annotated thing, right, and uh, we're touching this, uh, we've been touching this all the time, practically, basically. Uh, this is about reducers, I'm saying this all the time, that by default our messages are adding with using reducer, and this is this one. And we can construct the same uh, kind of structure for our own value. So we do the, uh, it's, same, it's still the list of values, and we uh, have this annotated keyword, and we are providing reducer for adding the values at the top, right? And if I compile the graph, it looks exactly the same. Uh, the only difference here is that the state is different, and now we are using, we are utilizing this annotated thing. And if I run it, let's check and see how it works. And see, this time there is no exception, so everything works smoothly. And what's happening from A, uh, okay, it's an empty state, and then B gets the state A, and C gets the state A. And then when, uh, then, then goes to the D from the two directions, and we have updated states from A, from B, and from C. And then D updates the state, and let's clearly we have this A, B, C, D state. And what's important to note here are uh, these B and C nodes, they were executed in concurrent mode, like at the same time, simultaneously, in parallel, whatever words like you 
feels better for you, right? But uh, the important thing, this B and C, they were executed in a scope of one step practically. It's super step, it's called in the terminology of uh, LearnGraph. And it gives you some limitations. For example, if something happens, just as an example, right, uh, to give you this feeling, if something happens in not C, for example, an exception is thrown, then the whole super step will be cancelled. So it doesn't matter that B finished successfully, right? The whole super step will be cancelled and state will not be updated. So you need to remember that. And this will run in parallel. And let's try to make it a bit more funny, different. Uh, let's extend the B in node. So I'm compiling the graph. And here what we have, uh, we have this A and C, the single step, but then we have, uh, we split it B to two steps, B1 and B2. And, uh, well, let's give it a try and see how it works. And if you check it, there is something really wrong here, right? They're not running in parallel, kind of, because, uh, let's check it. So A is clear, it's empty state, then B1 gets the state from A and this one. And C also gets the state from A and this one. And everything is fine at this time, right? But what happens to B2? It gets the state from A b1 and c at the same time so even even if i'm here at this branch and it has no connection to c i already have this state from c so i have this a b1 and c at the same time and then also interesting because uh after the c not it goes to d and then i have this one so this adding adding to a b1 and c it's kind of expected behavior which we saw already right previously but then what happens we have another d call which comes from B2, and it, this time it says A1, B1, C, B2, the result of this one, and D, which comes from the first uh, invoking the D, right? So then we have really something weird here. We have A1, B1, uh, C, B2, and D is duplicated practically. So why this happens? Uh, this is pretty simple because these are not run in parallel anymore. So only uh, if you have this construction, and this is what LangGraph documentation says, then it's in parallel, and then you have the synchronization kind of of results uh, here. But this one is not synchronized at all. So what's happening? Uh, probably, uh, probably, uh, we have this A and not then B1 and C run in parallel, and then the execution continues, and then we have two independent threads here, starting from this one and that one. And again, this is uh, this is this explains why, for example, B2 has uh, this C data because this one was a super step, and it shared the state, right? So that's why B2 has all the C as well. Uh, well, but that's not what we want, right? Uh, that's not the idea. Like if I check the graph, my idea would be okay. We are synchronizing here, and D should wait until this flow finished and this flow is finished. How can we do this? This is the question, guys. And well, there is a way how to do it. Special technique, uh, what you have to do, you have, when you're adding your nodes, uh, edges, sorry, edges, not nodes, you have to specify that uh, this edge comes from B2, B2, and C at the same time. So I want to have this kind of synchronization here. And uh, let me compile it again. And it's the same view, right? Nothing's very different here because it's hidden at the edge definition. Again, I'm showing it to you. And this time, if I run it, see the result is quite different. Uh, from A to empty, B1 goes from A, C goes from A, this is correct. And then B2 goes from A, B1, and C again, because this is super step. It shares the state. You need to remember about that. But finally, we want what we have, right? We have the single D execution, and it's uh, taken A, A, B1, uh, C, and B2. And this is the final state. We are adding D at the end. So this is the way kind of technique you can uh, force uh, it to synchronize the flow. And uh, maybe a bit more interesting example. Uh, let, me, let me start from the end here. I will compile the graph and show it to you, then explain the code. So this is how it looks like, and this is conditional branching. So what's the idea? Uh, let's go back to the code. We have the route parameter in our state, and then based on the route, and the route could be BC or CD, it goes either, execution goes either uh, B and C and aggregates on E, or it goes uh, where C and D and aggregates on E. 
So uh, it's up to us to decide which way we would like to route this graph. And how to construct it? We have a list of nodes. That is that that is pretty standard here. I'm going to talk about that in details. We added nodes, and this is interesting. What's happening here? We are adding conditional node, conditional age. Sorry, I'm mixing these things all the time in this video. I don't know why. We are adding conditional age here. It goes from A. This is clear, right? And uh, we are providing the function which is responsible to decide which way to go, which road to take. And we are providing uh, all the possible options here, it's B, C, and D. And talking about the function which is responsible for taking the right path, it's pretty simple, right? If, if a route is B, C, then we return B and C, otherwise it's C and D. And this is how it looked like. So let's give it a try and see how it works, and if it works, who knows. Uh, so I'm starting first with B and C, and this one and that one, and I'm completely ignoring D road here. Uh, take a look. We have A, B, and C, and then we directly go into E node and takes A, B, and C, and the result is A, B, C, D completely. Yeah, sorry, A, B, C, and E completely ignoring D node, and it was B, C. And if I check C, D, it's more or less the same, but just we are taking the right uh, part of this graph. So it's uh, A, C, D, E, and A, C, D. Uh, B is not here, and the result is A, C, D, E, and B again is not here. You may want, or uh, maybe you are wondering, uh, what's the practical usage of that, right? And just to make it a bit fun here at the end, uh, let me provide you a practical example. Why would you need that? So this is the idea. Uh, again, maybe we should start from this next time. Let me compile the graph and explain it to you, and then we go through the code. So how it works, let's, let's, uh, let's imagine we are working on an assistant. Who, who is, whose responsibility is to help us with answering the questions. And practically, we have two sources of information. The kind of stable one, which is Wikipedia. Another source is Internet, where you can grab up-to-date, like very freshly created articles, maybe pages, which responds, uh, which explains your question. And what we want to have, we want to grab the information from these two sources, then combine it together, and then using all these bunch of documents, we are generating the answer. So this is really pure, clear example of prioritization, and then we are saving a lot of time because every node like search verb and search Wikipedia takes time because it's a network call and we are running it in parallel, so we are saving our time here a lot, like dramatically. So let's check the code here. Uh, what do we have? We have, uh, again, we have node search verb, and I'm using tably for that. Uh, if you're going to repeat it, you have to obtain your API key for that. And uh, it's in environment variable, saved already, but you have, again, you have to request your own one, otherwise it's, it will not work. And uh, we have a state, the graph state is question, answer, and we have the context, which is list of documents. And again, we decided uh, we are having this uh, reducer that is responsible for adding documents all the time when you are trying to merge documents from uh, two different nodes in parallel, right? And we perform the search in internet, and then we are generating our resources, documents, practically we're interested in the content only, and then we are kind of uh, making this XML compilable thing like documents. So we are keeping a list of documents. And we are returning this content uh, context as a list. And again, we are using reducer, so it will be added on the top. And the same for search Wikipedia, we, we are using this Wikipedia loader, it's from well, surprise, surprise, from Lanchain community. And uh, we have our question, again, we're making a call, and the same way we are formatting documents, right? Uh, so it's very unified way how they look like. And we are also returning that back. And the uh, aggregator kind of generate answer, it's more interesting here because at this time we have a list of all the documents from Wikipedia and web search. And we are defining our assistant that uh, knows that, okay, there is a list of provided documents and the responsibility of this assistant to generate an answer based on this, like using this document as a source. And uh, the second uh, system message we are creating here is system context. And uh, we are just saying, okay, use the following documents as a context for your response. And then we are formatting documents, like uh, making this uh, bullet point list finally. 
and just we then send it to LLM and uh, returning back the answer of that. That's pretty easy, right? Pretty simple. And well, let's give it a try. And uh, my question would be like, should I invest in AI stocks now? Who knows what would be the answer, but let's give it a try and run. And it takes time as usual, right? Because it's a network call. And finally, we do have an answer that investing in AI stocks now could be a strategic decision due to something and somewhere. And there is a however, and before making an investment, you should consider, etc. But uh, if you grab the whole result or the whole state at the end, we can see that, okay, we have a question. We do have an answer, and this is a message theme. And then we have a context which contains a bunch of the documents we grabbed from two different sources in parallel and then we merged them in a single list. All right, that was it for parallelization thing. And uh, next time we are going to progress a bit here in this area and we'll take a look uh, how you can utilize uh, so-called subgraphs. So your graph consisting of several subgraphs. This is a really interesting thing and technique. And it was me, Evgeny. Uh, thanks uh, for sticking with me till the end. And I'm really glad you're here and uh, we'll meet you other next time in the next video. Bye-bye.